Hey guys, uh, my name is Stephanie. I am one of the physical therapists here at Empower Physical Therapy. Just to kind of tell you a little bit about me. Um, I have been a physical therapist for almost 20 years, which seems really crazy because there's no way I feel like I'm that old. <laughs> but um, I have loved to, to learn. Like I always am constantly seeking um, ways of figuring out the body and um, taking courses and um, getting degrees and different things. It's just going to help me help my patients. And that's what I love. I love, I love the body because it's a puzzle and, and you just have to start figuring out what that puzzle is and you find patterns. And, um, and that's one of the things that, that we do in this office is really find those patterns and really figure out where the source is coming from and, and what, uh, we can do to help get people back to live in their life. I grew up as an athlete, so, you know, my body awareness and understanding and always being curious about, like, why this hurts and what happens with this um, has always been a part of, of my life. Um, so, yeah, let's give it to, to Ben. Ben, can you tell you a little bit about yourself? So, I've been a physical therapist for over five, almost five and a half years now, and um, I really, I, I wanted to come over to this practice so I could spend more time with my patients and really give people a more tailored approach and figure out, you know, what the specific issue was for that person and help them get all the way back to their activities. Um, as far as knees go, that's always been something that was kind of near and dear to my heart. It's kind of why I became a physical therapist in the first place was because I came back from some knee injuries myself when I was uh, growing up playing sports. I had three different ACL surgeries, um, all pretty spaced apart. And each time, I mean, my physical therapist really got me back over the hump and got me back to playing sports. And um, I, I, I thought to myself, I want to do that too. So here I am. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to get into like why pain pills, medications, injections, um, and surgeries don't always, always work. I can tell you a story of mine where I had a knee surgery that I never wish I would have had. Um, we'll get to that later. MRIs, why MRIs and imaging leads more uh, leads us down to more un unnecessary procedures. And what healthcare providers miss in helping you get back to living your life and staying active and mobile. So several ways that um, we're gonna be able to help you. So stay tuned at the end because we have a special offer. But I always say that where the site of the pain is, is often not where the source of the pain is coming from. So that's like a saying that I say all, all the time, because there's often when you can find things that are happening in the knee, but maybe it's something that's going on with the hip, or maybe it's something that's going on with the back. You, you don't know. Um, and there's a lot of different things that can provide pain in, into, into the knee. So some of the causes of knee pain, um, decreased mobility in the hip and the knee. Um, that, that's a big one. Um, there's a lot of times when you can have a lot of hip tightness and a lot of that hip tightness um, can um, refer pain down into that knee, but you can also have um, reduced knee mobility. There, there's a, a condition that we see all the time that, that mimics a meniscal tear. And, it, and I literally, we can determine that in like two or three visits, whether it's a meniscal tear or it's something else that mimics it, where you have that locked kind of knee, um, decreased mobility, but, uh, but there's things that can, that can mimic that. And, and a lot of times people have knee surgery for things that maybe that's not really what was really going on. Muscle imbalances and movement habits. You know, I always tell people we've got to get the mobility before we get the stability. And so, you know, you can't get to the muscle imbalances and the movement habits until you can get the mobility back because the muscles won't fire. Uh, we have a patient in right now and literally she's tried, I don't know how many places that she's tried. And, you know, we, she couldn't get stronger. She couldn't feel like anything was firing. And part of that was because she didn't have hip mobility. But the reason why she wasn't having the hip mobility was because of things that she was doing throughout the day. Like she loved to sit in a chair cross-legged and until we fixed that piece of it and gave her awareness around that, her hip kept on staying tight. And as soon as we resolved that piece of it, her hip started opening up. And once her hip started opening up, we were able to get some of the muscles to fire correctly so that now for the first time in years, her knee, she's, she's feeling fluid in her knee. She's starting to be able to squat again with her knee and not have any problems. Even the sounds in her knee are starting to go away. So there is a, a method to the madness. Back pain. Back pain is another big one that can produce knee pain. Um, we've had people that 
only had back stiffness, um, didn't really complain of anything, anything else, but had knee issues and it was coming from the back. Um, muscle tightness in the hips, IT band, hamstrings and quads. Again, you have to get to the source of why they're tightening up because um, sometimes the tightness can be come from a lot of different different sources and reasons why. So if you only go to the tightness and that's and you're only looking at like doing massage and soft tissue in those areas, if there's something that's creating that tightness, you're missing you're missing the boat. So then talk to us a little bit about why medication injections don't always work. Well, with the uh, uh, my outline, uh, am I echoey? You're good. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, so you'll see pain kind of represent itself three different ways. Um, you see either mechanical pain or thermal pain or chemical pain. So with the thermal pain, we really don't have to worry about that. That's more of like, um, hot, cold, you know, burns, things like that. Uh, with the chemical pain, that's really when you're in that acute phase, um, of an injury. So, uh, you know, when you have an injury, your body sends chemicals there to help clean it up, help it heal. And that inflammatory process can be that kind of burning pain that you can't really get away from. There's no movement you can go to. And that's really the main time that medications and injections are going to help you. Um, after that, once you're out of that first inflammatory phase, it's more about uncovering the, uh, the mechanical pain. So that's the pain that you know, you can, you can move away from, you can find a position of relief. Um, certain movements that you do will make it worse. And um, it's really about kind of recognizing that pattern. But the thing is that medications and injections don't touch that because they're just there to treat the chemicals. They're not gonna change whatever's happening mechanically um, because that's all about different movements or postures and positions. Yeah, the mechanics, and, and sometimes the mechanics is, you have to have surgery for those kind of things, but often it's it's not always the case. So things that can create mechanical pain are similar to what, what Ben said, like there are repetitive movements that we're doing that can create some of those things. It could be um, over working our body and it's not recovering. It can be, um, you know, in the knee, there's things that are in the front of the knee, they're called fat pads. And sometimes those fat pads can kind of get like locked up in the knee, which gives us that, that, that almost uh, uh, similar symptoms as a meniscal tear, but, they're, but, but it's the fat pads. And so there's mechanics that we can teach people on how to get out of, um, depending on like what's going on. But there are sometimes when the mechanical piece is, we've, you've got to go in and, and have surgery in order to uh, make everything operate. And the other piece of the mechanical part is, is figuring out like, what is it that you're doing throughout the day that's creating some of your problems? Like we have to get into like lifestyle, like daily, like, just like I said in that story before, if we didn't figure out that my patient was crossing her legs, um, and that's the way she was sitting 90% of the time throughout the day when she was working, then we wouldn't have been able to fix anything. It's very similar to like pulling your finger back. If your finger pulled back is what is the problem, we can do all the soft tissue, the massage, the injections, the surgery. If we don't fix you pulling your finger back where the joint doesn't like being in that position, we're not gonna have some of those problems. And that's a big thing that healthcare providers miss. So tell us a little bit more why, why surgery can lead to more surgeries and what research tells us. Well, I think especially, I mean, the first thing that we'll see is, you know, if they're gonna jump to surgery real quick or, you know, they might jump to a, do an injection and then they, do a surgery and they always go for these meniscectomies. Well, I mean, a lot of people have meniscal tears and that's not the reason why they're ha having pain. I mean, they may have had that meniscal tear for a very long time and whatever they, maybe they changed what they're doing and just, it flared their knee pain. Uh, um, so a lot of times you'll see these people kind of like, well, they'll have a meniscectomy and a meniscectomy and then, you know, down the road, okay, well now you're ready for the joint replacement. We've tried all, we've, tried, we've removed the majority of your meniscus now, and now you have to have a joint replacement. Um, so I, with stuff like that, I think it's always just really beneficial to just exhaust your conservative options as far as like just trying to find a way that you can manage it or actually or get past it without having to go through this long line of injections and then eventually surgery. 
Yeah, I mean, that's one thing. I wish I never would have messed with my knee my second time. My first surgery, I de definitely needed, but my second surgery, I just went and said, no, let's do it because it worked so well the first time. And I'm just like any other patient that would be out there. If I would have known what I know now, I'd have been like, no, don't have that second surgery. There's other things that you possibly can do. And so, um, but you know, if you look at, if they look at you and they say, oh, you just have some degenerative changes and we just need to clean it up. If they're using the words clean it up. Those surgeries are not successful. The research shows that those surgeries are not successful. Like regular, you know, exercise and just get it, keeping you moving can be more successful than having some of those surgeries. They have research with people in line of having total knee replacements. And literally they, they were, were done with uh, doing a McKinsey therapy style evaluation, which is what all my training is, our, our, all of our training is. And literally uh, they, they went and they evaluated them and they put them into two categories. They put them into, okay, this is gonna be sort of what we call a, a McKinsey joint mode, understanding like which direction we need to go that can kind of open it up or was it general exercise? And they went and put them into two categories. And of the people that were waiting for total knee replacements, like they were going to have it scheduled. This is what they wanted to do. 40% of them did not even need a total knee replacement. 40%. Like that's huge. And so when, when you hear Ben say like, we need to exhaust all options, we need to exhaust all options. The more you start messing with your body and having surgeries, the more you start having problems and the more you will start having problems later down the road. Talk just a little bit more about MRIs, because this is a big reason why people end up having surgeries. So I was kind of talking about earlier, with the, um, you know, a lot of people will have these meniscal tears and they, they show up on MRI because MRIs show you exactly what's going on with the tissues, but that may not always be the reason for your pain. You may have had that, you may have had that meniscus tear, or you may have had those bone spurs for a very long time. And then all of a sudden you start having knee pain and they go and they look on your MRI and they say, well, there it is. You know, you're having, you have a, a meniscal tear or you have a degenerative joint disease or uh, here's some bone spurs here, you know, something floating around. But, you know, that may have been there a very long time. So it doesn't necessarily correlate with, the, with what's going on with you. I mean, there are plenty of instances where, you know, they'll take an, a person with no symptoms, an asymptomatic population do an MRI and they have all these terrible things going on with them. I mean, you can see it in the back with um, herniated disc. You can see it in the knee with, you know, uh, advanced arthritis or um, like I was, I keep saying meniscal tears, but I feel like that's a really big one. Um, it's a really big portion of unnecessary surgeries that are done. Yeah, they, um, if you look at, you know, as we age, we, well, well more, more than likely something's going to show up. It's like similar to like, as we age, we get wrinkles on our face. It's just what happens as we age. So when you do imaging and you look at the research on imaging, as we age, it gets up to where like a, an asymptomatic population that are fully functional, no problems. You know, you can get to in, anywhere into the eighties and 90% of, of showing something, but these are asymptomatic. You know, when you get younger, it's, it's going to be more in the 60%. So you can show things on imaging that may or may not be where the problem's coming from, especially when you hear, like, when I always tell you, like, where the side of the pain is often not where the source of the problem's coming from. So people will go like, oh, knee pain, we're just only going to look at the knee. And that's the only thing that, that we're going to do. I mean, we I had a patient in here um, that had ACL surgery, which is, by the way, one of the things that I would go and get imaged <laughs> to see if it actually is torn. And it is one that I would definitely recommend having surgery, but she had a, um, an ACL tear from him a ski accident. And I told her, just go, go do therapy. Um, and when you get to the point where you feel like you're not progressing then come in and see us. And so she did, she went to and did the easy therapy. Um, but she came in and saw us sooner than she thought she was because she was getting all this knee pain and she couldn't figure out what it was. And they were doing dry needling on her knee, which hurt like heck and did nothing. Um, and only looking at her knee, they did, um, cross fiction massage on her patellar tendon, um, so they're giving her all these things. And here it was like three weeks later, she still was having issues and, and not getting better. And so finally she said, whatever, I'm just going to come in. And as soon as, and she was also getting back pain as well. So when she was telling me that I'm like, Ooh, okay. You've been doing your exercise that you normally were doing for your back that normally were working and are not working now because she had been in for that before. And I said, we've got to look at your hip and just this, it, explaining everything. And so sure enough, that's where, that's where her knee pain was coming from. That's actually where her back pain was coming from as well. And once we got it opened up, um, her literally in that first visit, her knee pain went away. Now we still had to work on her 
for a few more times to, to get her back feeling better um, and get her hip moving, but her knee pain literally went away in one visit and we didn't even touch her knee where her pain was hurting. So that's why you just can't always use imaging. It can't be like, this is what it is because you never know where things are coming from. And sometimes it can be layers of things. It could be like, we've got to work on this and then we've got to work on this and then we've got to work on this because of, of kind of what's going on. It's not, it's not a cookie cutter approach. So what do other healthcare providers miss? And we've talked about this earlier, lifestyle changes. Like what is it that you're doing throughout the day that might be creating some of these problems? Like we have to, we have to look into that. It's the same idea as like when I tell you to pull your finger back and, or when you pull your finger back and you hold it there for long periods of time, your joints don't like being in those positions. And so we are always in these repeated positions and motions and that, that creates problems within our joints. Um, and so if we don't get to figuring out like what you did throughout, throughout the day that's creating some of these problems, then we're missing part of, of the treatment of getting you back fully. They only look at the side of the pain. Oh my gosh, happens all the time. <laughs> um, they only look at the injury one way. For example, they'll only do a massage because there's just tightness around there, or they're only going to work on strengthening because you're, you're weak. Um, they're only going to do you know, joint modes or manipulations or whatever. And because that, they're only looking at it from one piece and you've really got to look at the whole thing. You've got to look at the big picture. You've got to look at the joints above and below. Um, and you've got to look at to like why things are happening. So here's the story of a, of a guy. And this, this guy literally, um, he was the husband of a wife who was coming in here into our office. And she was trying to convince him to come in. He went to the orthopedic surgeon. He literally got an MRI, showed a meniscal tear and said he needed to have surgery. And um, I was like, could you please just cut, have him come in? Just please, please have him come into our office. And so, so he, he ended up doing it. He ended up coming in for one visit and we talked for a while and I was asking him what he did. And he said, I'm not really sure what I did. Like it just started hurting one day and they had puppies so that he was on his knees, um, like just taking care of the puppies. That was kind of what was, was going on. And I said, um, you know, with you not really knowing, like, I really think that they're, you know, what I tell people, they're, they're things that can mimic a meniscal tear. I mean, he had very similar signs and, and sure enough, he said, okay, let's give it a try. And within like a couple of visits, we got his range of motion back. He was feeling better. Um, we had to work on some other things to fully resolve and get him back to what he wanted to do. But as far as the knee pain and him needing that surgery, he didn't, he totally avoided it. And the MRI showed that he had a meniscal tear. The doctor was ready to do surgery on him and we were able to help him avoid it. Um, and so that's, that's where, you know, coming in to, to really, um, you know, sit down, listen, talk. I mean, we spend an hour, sometimes longer with people just to figure out what's going on and then giving people stuff to work on and then seeing how their body responds and then adjusting each time that, that we see them to get them back to what they need to do. So what do we take from this? Most injuries don't require surgery or medications. Um, we see it all the time. I think I've sent in the last three years, two people to having knee surgeries. And one was um, a dislocation that was, we just had been working on her for a while and they just had some, some issues there. And then another one recently um, needed, oh, it was random. It was a, um, like they had a mass in their knee, I could move it around. Like it was the most random thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, you, you probably need to have surgery. And there was, there was a like um, calcification that was moving around in her knee that was locking it up. But that's it in three years. That's all that we've sent people to surgery for. And we're not against surgery. We're not against injections and medications and those kind of things. Um, but we do think that they are overused. Most of the time, um, your pain comes from somewhere else, or there's layers of things that need to be looked at. And there's a process on figuring out how, how to pull away some of those layers. <clears throat> MRIs and x-rays don't off, often guide us in treatment and resolving knee pain. And um, see a specialist to help figure out where the source is coming from. And there is hope that, they, that you can get back to living your life again and doing what you love to do. So we have, like I said earlier, that we had some special options for people, um, you know, for people that are coming and listening to this, we will do, um, we have a free kind of uh, what we call discovery visits where we can sit down and just help you make a better decision about your health, whether you come in or, or, or you don't come in. Um, but it's really there to help help you make, make a decision whether 
you know, maybe surgery is the path that you need to go on, or, or maybe it's not, or maybe we, we need to dig in a little bit deeper because we're noticing after having some of the conversations with you that, you know what, we've seen some of these before. We need to go and move to an evaluation so that we can really get down, see how your body moves and, and test it and retest it just to see how your body responds. And then anyone coming in for a full evaluation um, for the next 15 days, we will give you $50 off your evaluation price um, if you use it in the next 15 days. So that um, that is it for today. I'm going to stop the recording. And if anyone has any questions, we can...